should have started this off that way. Let me put let me put a couple of summary things on the recording. Okay. Okay. So we were talking about, you know, your purpose for for being here. Want to be professional at it someday. Uh, for the for the time being, we're looking at personal issues. Not good enough. Fear of rejection. Those two are linked. We're talking about. You are talking about your grandfather, although you never remember experiencing this. Apparently, he didn't like you very much. He rejected you, didn't pick you up, show you love, this kind of thing. The mere thought of that or the mere discussion of that brings you a a heart tug of some kind, coming near tears, Yes, and so on. Point being in all of that, here we are decades later, and your response to it, very important word, your response to it, is still there. You still feel rejected and not good enough, even though you don't even remember the actual event, just the discussion of it right. brings it up. Okay. Yes. So it's the re- your response to these things that we're really going to aim at because that's what we can shift over time and elegantly, depending upon your diligence. Thank you. That was a summary, wasn't it? That was very nice. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now, I also mentioned in there, uh, we want to aim at what causes the issues. I'm not good enough. I fear of rejection and so on. What causes those issues? And now we're talking about your grandfather as a as a possibility okay my guess is there's more causes in there yes so let me pause a moment and ask you about what else might be a cause um, it would be a cause that my dad with my entire life there's a couple things with him that um he treated my older sister in my opinion better than he treated me um i have a younger sister and I have three younger brothers and my dad catered to my brothers and my older sister. He, I don't want to put in what I I think his thoughts are right now because I don't think that's important right now. No, go ahead. Um, Well, I really think that he, he catered to her more so because number one, it wasn't his child. And I didn't find out until very, very recently. He didn't even want her. He wanted my mother to get an abortion. I just found that out from my mother. Even though he treated your sister better than you? Yes. He, yeah. Okay. And so why would he do that if she wasn't even wanted? Um, yeah, that's a really good question. I don't know. I always felt growing up that he treated her better because he was trying to keep peace or... um like with my, my mother's parents, he wanted to show them that I'm, I am a good father to this, to, to her. Oh, okay. Well, that would be motivation. You sure. Yeah. Wants right. to keep peace in the peace in the family, right. whatever his motivation. Right. And we're not really that concerned with his motivation as we are again, with your response to all that, your father rejected you treated your sister better than you. Now, the dynamic behind all of that, and I got to interject something here. Um, The only thing I know about you, Sharon, is what you're telling me. So obviously I don't know your whole life story and all the, whatever goes on and so on. So I have to sit here and make reasoned guesses, but they are guesses. Okay. So if I make some assumptions that don't seem on point, you need mm-hmm. to correct me. Otherwise, we'd be going down some avenue that. Oh, yeah. No, I'll, I'll trust me. I'll correct you. Yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> but just don't, re- just don't reject me, okay? <laughs> I, I can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I never think about other people going through the things that I go through. <laughs> This everybody goes through rejection. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can't get through this world even without it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there are billions of people on this world and all of them have 
No two people have the same set of beliefs, attitudes, desires, et cetera. They, no two people have them. It's all right. cultural differences, family differences, da, 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 all education all differences, all kinds of things. Yeah. So everybody you meet, including your ex-husband and your husband-to-be, if there is one and all of this, okay, yes. and me and anybody else you meet, has a different set of beliefs that they're using to come from, and they're going to conflict. Right. Okay. And you're going to be wrong according to my beliefs or somebody else's beliefs or whatever. <laughs> and you're going to get rejected for it. Ha ha ha. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, that's yeah. true. It's very true. You're right. Yes. Okay. And you, 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 there's not a thing you're going to do about it. Okay. Except get upset when it happens. That's, that's you. You can do that if you want. Okay. okay. Or go, or go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we hope we're going to, we want to get you to. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Which is, ah. I'm getting there. All right. <laughs> so anyway, anyway. Central, central to all this that I'm seeing so far. Um, is a young child. This is true for, for everybody that I know. Anyway. Young child needs love. Sort of adults. But the young child needs love they're trying to find their way in the world and of course parents are the obvious source of that love grandparents as well okay and family and this kind of thing okay yes and sometimes the parents aren't able to give it we have a domineering father we have we have people that never understood never got love themselves uh, and therefore are unable to share it because they haven't really gotten it themselves. And the way you describe your father as being somewhat domineering and all of that, mm -hmm. I suspicion that love would be one of his big needs. Would I be correct? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think my, I don't think I ever heard my dad tell me that he loves me. Ever. All right. I think maybe until before, right before he passed, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know. Okay. And he wasn't the huggy person. My mother was. My mother was. My mother showed love basically in all she ever did. And it was with her growing up, I was never ashamed to get that from her, even if I was in a group of my friends. It, it was just, it was something that I was extremely proud of. Okay. All right. Good. So you've got a source of love. Your mother, apparently, yes, uh, received love as she was growing up because she would then be able to share it. If you don't have it, you, you can't share it. Okay? Yeah. And from what she tells me, no, she did not. Well, she got it someplace. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, this is true. She had to get it someplace. And I don't know where she got okay. it because All she right. doesn't tell me that. All right. Well, maybe better stated, you, you got it from her. You got, right. you got your metaphor. I use your love sponge filled up. Yes, by her, but not by your father, and apparently your grandfather. Right there, you get um, domination, and it's just, see, children interpret these things differently, but yeah. it's a general rule. They interpret when they're not getting love from a presumed source of love, father, for example, uh, that there's something wrong with them. They're not good enough. Okay. Yes. And this is a form of rejection. How am I doing? Very good. Spot okay. on. Okay. So we're looking for cause. Now, there may be other causes, you know, teachers, siblings, you know, kids in school, the blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But we're, we're trying to find foundational causes and as far as i can tell so far we're we're opening the door to a foundational cause would i this yes. seems seems right yes yes okay so we want to aim at that cause what we want to do is take that cause and all of its emotional intensity around it reduce that intensity down 
down, down. So that that no longer replays as an adult. See, when you tell me about the grandfather issue and you felt ready to cry, right? Yes. That's a form of replaying it, even though you may not say, oh, I am now replaying that again. Your system is bu it's bubbling up. It's in there someplace and replaying in its own way. Right. To give you that response. <clears throat> we want to get it so that it doesn't replay. Yeah, because it replays in a lot of different areas of my life because of the my ex-husband and guys that I've dated and even the last gentleman that I don't even know what's going on with this relationship because it's always just constantly be, me being rejected. And uh, right there, I will cry. Okay. Well, let me, let, me, let me go back to what you just said for a second. I want to explore it. It's the, your, your current relationship tends to have with it lots of rejection. Now, um, I'm not there. I don't know what goes on. I don't know who says what and all of that. Um, but I would guess a couple of things are going on. One is he may feel like he's got to somehow or other be critical or something because that's just part of his makeup or something. And, and therefore you would get rejected. That's rejection feelings. That's one. Okay. But the other would be, you've got a lot of unresolved rejection in the past and it's pretty easy. Even when he's not intending to be critical, you might pick it up as rejection. Yeah. I take it personal. Absolutely. I do. Yeah. Even, even stuff to him was just a casual comment yeah. could be. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that is part of the dynamics. He would it even is part of it. Yeah. He has a lot of issues in his life um, with his dealing with his mother and his dad, basically his mother. He had a horrifying childhood with his mother. Okay. And right. um, so I know that that's a lot of it. I know that a lot of things he says to me is not, it's not me because he basically will tell me that I said something. And, well, you, this is what you said. I'm like, when I never, those words never came out of my mouth. You're replaying that from somewhere else in your life. Yeah. That's not yeah. Me. yeah. Yeah. And so, and so goes most relationships. Yeah. These things are unresolved and they just keep replaying them and, Current relationships <laughs> trigger each other. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and on and on and on and on and on, on, on it go. I mean, yeah. it's it's yeah. serious in a way, but we want to get to the look at it. It's comical in another way. Okay, it, it is. If you actually look at it, it's comical. But I'm tired of dealing with it. To be honest, yeah. with you. I actually would like to have a relationship with someone. Yeah, a good, yeah. A good relationship with someone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, number one to do this is to go back and resolve, which we can do, these things that replay. Yeah. And number two, hopefully, for the romantic partner, for him to do the same thing, clean his own house, if you will. Yeah. And then the two of you are sitting there replaying a bunch of stuff and arguing with each other. And what's really going on is your pasts are having a war. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> but it, it seems like it's in current time. Yes. All right. Okay. So we're looking for peace. Good word? Absolutely. Good word. All right. <laughs> so let me let me bring to your attention one of my metaphors. Um, that maybe you've read about so far, but I want to discuss it anyway. It's, it's called the tabletop and table legs. Are you familiar with it? Yes, I am. Yes, for what you put on the table and then, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yes. Well, I want to make sure we're on the same page, so I'm going to go over it briefly with you. Okay. 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 So the, the, the metaphor itself is quite simple. Here's a tabletop. OK, and a tabletop is supported by table legs. Right? Yes. Remove the table legs. The tabletop falls. Easy metaphor. Yeah. OK. Yes. In your particular case, we will take an emotional issue like I'm easily rejected. I'll just pick that one up. OK. OK. That would be a tabletop. All yes, right? it would be. Yes. OK. Now, what's supporting it are table legs. Yes. But the table legs are the important term, 
specific events in your life where you felt rejected previously. Okay. If you never had any rejection table legs in your life, you wouldn't even know what rejection was. Right. Okay. So you wouldn't have, I'm afraid of rejection because you, you'd have no concept of what it was. So you've got all of these rejection things and everybody has them. Okay. Yeah. And you just don't have a handful. You got boatloads. Everybody. Yes. Does. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. So what we want to do is take these specific events which are charged with emotional intensity that replays later on until they get resolved. We want to resolve them, which we can do, which we can do. We want to resolve them. So the rejection thing falls, duh, 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 yes. and so rejects it distinctly. But we do that. We don't do that with one, say, oh, okay, take care of all my rejection, unseen therapist. Too many pieces. Too many resistances, too many yeah. things going on. We do it one at a time. Okay. Okay. That's what you and I are going to do today. Okay. All right. With, with one, but I've still got to go over some stuff here with you. So w- while there are several of these, we're going to deal with one. Okay. Now, the nice thing about this idea is. You, you may have hundreds of these rejections, maybe over a thousand. I don't know. I mean, you know, it, we all have lots of them. Yes. You don't need to do all hundreds or a thousand or something. You need to do five, 10, 15, 20 really well, thoroughly, which is what you'll learn to do in this course. Okay. And when you do, it will, that will generalize over all the rest because there's some commonalities among all these specific events, similar right. people, similar gestures, similar tones of voice, similar environment, similar so-and-so. Okay. So you start taking care of a bunch of them thoroughly. It tends to generalize over all the rest of them and the tabletop comes okay. down. That doesn't mean somebody's not going to criticize you someday, et cetera. But the, what right. that does, what that does mean is when that happens, you don't fall apart and start wanting to cry and get angry and defensive. You go, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not disrespectfully. It's just to understand yeah. that's where they're coming from. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I understand that. Um, as an aside, just so you know, I, I was very privileged growing up in that my mother, my mother constantly, constantly told me how, wonderful I was. She was amazed at my mere presence at all times. Wow. Const- constantly. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I basically grew up as wonder boy. Okay. And that doesn't mean I never got rejected, but because of that, I didn't, because I didn't have a foundation of criticism and rejection. I had the opposite. Okay. Big gift, great, huge gift. Okay? Yeah. Um, as a result of that, it's almost impossible to reject me. You can criticize me and say, oh, you know, yeah. whatever you did was right. wrong. And something. But I, I'm going, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will sleep at night. And it's just, yeah. it's just, I understand it's the way the real work, the way the world works. People have to project out their own guilt yes. and their own rejections, their own unrest. And I'm handy. And so they did it. <laughs> I yes, hope, you, right. hope you feel better. <laughs> <Get you. laughs> yeah. I tried to raise my boys that way. Okay. Good. Because I saw that, you know, things that I didn't like the, about the way that I was raised that I, I was like, oh, no, and my, and my oldest son is, I mean, I think they both are really good. They're really good. They're really, really good. Kids. Oh, good. My mother was rejected big time all throughout her childhood. And, and she saw what that felt like. Yeah. Now, some people just project out and they do the same thing to their children. She didn't to me, just like you're not doing that to your children. Right. She chose for whatever the reason to. Yeah. Which is, I think, really what my mother did. My mother doesn't give herself credit for that, but I think that that's exactly what she did because she had, uh, she did not like, the way that it felt. She said, you know, I was told to sit and shut up and don't talk. And, you know, and I said, well, if you were that little child right there now, what would you do? And she said, I'd go over. She said, I saw that it wasn't right. And she said, I would go over and I would, you know, 
relating, I was relating her to you're the mother of, of yourself. In other words. Now I'm playing teacher here for the moment, Sharon, we are, you and I right now are building up to a session with the unseen therapist. Now, we're, we're doing this in a rather advanced way. You'll begin, you'll learn in this course in some beginner's ways first, and then you'll build to advance and so on. But one of the, one of the advanced things that we do is called reframing. Are you familiar with that term? Yes. Okay. It's a matter of looking at all of this through a different set of glasses. Okay. Uh, and so we're discussing things like this, like what's foundational issues and we need to look at your, your response to things. It's not really what your grandfather did or didn't do. It's your response to it. I'm talking, asking you what cause is and so on. And so we're looking at all of this. We're exploring it. And the purpose for that, this is another important feature of all of this. And by the way, we're, we're recording this because I know I'm throwing a lot at you. Okay. So yes, you can go review it all you want. But there's another feature of this is important, and that is the unseen therapist will never, ever interfere with your right to believe whatever you want to believe. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you want to believe, for example, that you are a separate body instead of part of the grand oneness, which my books talks about. Yeah. You're right to do. She's not going to interfere with that. See, for her to interfere and say, well, Sharon, you can have this belief, but not that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the thought police. And she's yeah. not going to interfere with it. It's a very unloving thing to do. Right. So the skill you will learn here, and which I am demonstrating for you, um, is to learn to explore these things, reframe them, look at them a little differently, and metaphor, put them on top of the table so they're in plain sight. You're not repressing them, forgetting them, not want to look at them, all these other human things, okay? You're looking at them, and, and you're more able, willing to let them go. Well, once we do, the more we can do that, yes, the easier unseen therapist's job is. Yes. But if we keep stuff under the table, we don't want to look at it. Okay. Right. Or repress it or do human things like this. And it's all, all human, very human. Okay. Yeah. That will remain under the table. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. And replay in ways you don't want. So we want right. to put more on the table, more on the table, more on the table. Okay. That's why we're having this discuss it and you will see as you go back here the way things are worded and the topics brought up you will see how we're looking at all of this and putting stuff on top of the table you you may not see that now but you go back and look at that with that in mind mm -hmm. you'll you'll see it i hope you'll see it anyway yeah so. okay all right now we want to bring an unseen therapist but the way we do that efficiently is we use our personal peace procedure, which you, do I remember correctly? You have yet to read about in my book. Mm -hmm. I, I read it, but I didn't read it recently. Okay. Well, in that segment, it's the last segment in the book. Yes. Okay. It asks you to make a list of 30 or more specific events in your life. Do you recall that part? Have you done yes, that or, do. or not? I did not do that yet. Okay. Well, that's going to be a very important piece. So when you get done okay. here, you need to go back to the book and do that. Okay. okay. Um, that's really essential. Uh, uh, let me give you a metaphor. Um, um, if, if you take your car into a mechanic to fix it, okay, mechanic is not going to be able to fix it unless he has some tools. Okay. And among his, among his tools is a wrench. If he doesn't have a wrench, he's going to be really handicapped fixing your car, okay? Because yeah. yeah. he's got to you know, loosen some stuff and tighten some stuff and all kinds of things that go on. Right. 
In our process, the personal peace procedure, which we're going to do ourselves in a moment here, is the wrench. Okay. And it's something that you really need to digest, master, understand well, because you're going to be using it over and over and over again okay. as you go through this course. It's so fundamental that that's the first thing you need to do after we get done here. Okay. You want to make your list and so on. Now, so, but without that list, um, we can still pick up a specific event that is bothersome to you. And one thing you will learn is the farther back in time it is, that specific event, a yes. emotionally charged, in this case, rejection type specific event. The farther back in time you go, the more foundational it's likely to be. That's just common sense. Right. If you, if you talk about something that you're, that your current relationship said yesterday that bothered you. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's probably bouncing off of something back when you were two. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So you yeah. can deal with it, but you're probably going to be, they have to go back to two. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So my question to you is given that mm -hmm. go back in your own history, as far back as you can. Okay. I, I have one already. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Tell yeah. me what it is. Well, because I've talked about it many times, um, I think I was around eight years old. It was probably around this time of the year. My dad was planning on going hunting. And um, the night before I had a dream about him that he had been, sh that he was shot and killed. And um, I begged and I pleaded with him the next day to please not go. I remember pulling, I mean, I remember holding onto him, his legs and tell and crying and telling him, please do not go because I had this dream that he was not going to be coming home. And he basically told me that I'm being ridiculous. If you can, thank yeah. you. I suspicion, I suspicion, by the way, as you were telling that you were getting emotionally yeah, charged. Extremely emotional. Yeah. On a zero to 10 scale, what number yeah, would you get? It's that? a 10 because I can tell you that I'm about ready to cry because that really hurt me because he did not, he didn't seem to even care about my feelings. Okay. All right. I'm making a note. Hold on. Didn't care about my feelings is another way of saying he's not loving me. He's not paying attention to me. Right. He's ignoring me. He's rejecting me. What I'm saying isn't good enough. How am I doing? Very good. Okay. You may not have been articulating that at the moment, but we're looking back at it, trying to yes. put these things in perspective. All right. Now, wh when you read the book, that personal peace procedure section. Yes. You will come in that book to a very important, it's a sentence that helps you form a specific event properly so it can be addressed by unseen therapists efficiently. Yes. Right. And I'm going to give you that sentence now, and we're going to work that a little bit. But again, you need to go back and digest this and internalize it and, and right. so on. Okay, but I know the sentence you're going to say, but I can't think of it right now. But well, I know what you're going to say. All right, Go good. Okay. Well, I, the, the sentence in the earlier versions is a little different than the one in the later versions. That's okay. okay. So you, you want to see the later version. Mm -hmm. It starts off with the moment when. Yes. And then you fill in what happened. Now. Yes. I have to be very specific about it. I remember reading this. The moment when my... I told my father that I had a dream that he was going to be shot. I did, and I didn't, I didn't want him to go hunting. I felt, I felt scared, but it really hurt because he didn't care to listen to what I had to say. All right. Now, thank you. 
That was good. Good. We want to refine it still further. Okay. okay. As I'm hearing it, and remember, always correct me because I may not, right. I may have this wrong. Okay. Right. I'm hearing. I mean, the words you said was when I was telling my father not to go. Okay. I, I had, you said I had had this dream and told my father not to go. Right. Okay. What we're looking for in there is the crescendo emotional moment. Okay. And it's not that you had the, if I'm hearing it right, it's yeah. not that you had the dream. Right. It's not that you told him not to go. Right. It's that he rejected you and didn't pay attention. Yes. Did. Do you remember the words he said? Seriously, I think he said that's being ridiculous. I'm, I'll be fine. And he turned and he walked out the door. Okay. I'm going to write down the term that's ridiculous. Yes. Does that, that, that work? Yeah. Okay. So the moment when... My father said, that's ridiculous. And you know what all the other background is. Yes, okay. right. And I, now the next phrase is not how, how I felt. There was an error in what you were saying. Okay. It's not how you felt then. Okay. It's how you feel, it's how you currently feel now. Okay. As you remember, because that's what we can change. However you felt, however you felt then, maybe the same as that now. Makes sense. Often, often it is, but we can mm -hmm. change how you feel now. How you felt then, we can't do anything about. A base, right. a, a, a bit another baseball score. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Makes sense. So, all right. So close your eyes for me now. Revisit that. And give me, the, give me a label for your emotion about that. The ones that. I, he, I just, I feel like you rejected me and you just, you didn't listen to me. You don't care what I have to say. Okay. So I felt rejected. Yeah, I felt rejected. All right. Or I felt not good enough would be another substitute. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. All right, see. All right. Okay, good. See, we're, we're getting there now. The moment when my father said, that's ridiculous. Now, yeah. that may not be accurate. But let me take that apart a minute. I'm looking for a, a, a pivotal crescendo moment where you're saying to yourself, you know, a, a, a spike in your emotion. Yes. It says, oh, I don't count. Yeah. Oh, I'm useless. Was, I'm, not, I'm not lovable. I, I'm rejected. Yeah. Was that when it was when he said? Yeah, absolutely. Rejected? Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's the moment you want. That's the moment. You want. Okay. okay. So the moment when my father said, that's ridiculous and walked out the door. Yes. And I currently feel rejected about it. I currently feel rejected about it. Yeah. To a level of 10. Yeah. Am I still right? Okay. Yeah. Are there physical sensations that you can recall when you get into that? Uh, yeah. I mean, I can feel it. I can feel my body tightening. I can feel like my arms tightening and I actually am relating it to just wanting to hold on that I don't want to be rejected. Okay. So as you remember it, as you currently remember it, body mm -hmm. tightness, that's the whole yeah. body or is that your chest? It's, someplace? My, it's my arms and um, I can feel it in my heart and I can feel it in my jaw. I'm making a note. See, the, the physical sensations, these are measures. These are evidences of your, you physically manifesting an unresolved emotional issue, this specific event. Right. Okay. Now, and so, so we'll, we will want to check how those are doing. If, after we do our unseen therapist session, we want to see how those things feel. Okay. You know, when we test and all of that. All right. Okay. Well, with that in mind, why don't we bring in unseen therapist? Wait, 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 wait. I, I, I want to do one, one more reframe thing. Okay. Now, 
put yourself in the shoes of your father. All right. Now, one of the things that we don't want to do here is to excuse your father's behavior. But on the other hand, we don't want to criticize it either. Okay. We want to understand it. He has, whether you're aware of it or not, he has his own reasons for responding as he does. He has his own cause, his own responses, his own reaction to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. The word forgiveness may be a little strong at this point for you. I don't know, but forgiveness is ultimately where you want to get to because that's where your freedom lies. Yes. Okay. But understanding where he's coming from, that helps loosen everything. Okay. So as far as you know, do you think he was trying to be mean to you and that's or was he thinking something else? I mean, why would he behave in that way when you were quite obviously scared? Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, I would imagine he probably was thinking something else. He was getting ready to go hunting. He was getting his things together. He was preparing to leave. He's also the dominant character in the household. Yes. Everybody else's feelings are not as important as his. Right. Exactly. That's correct. Yeah, absolutely. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. And that, that would be a, again, we're not excusing the behavior. Yeah. Okay. Right. I mean, th there's better behavior possible here. Okay. Right. <laughs> but yeah. we're not, ex we're not excusing it. Right. We are trying to understand it. Okay. Apparently. Always correct me. Mm -hmm. He has a need to be the dominant person. Um, he has some conditioning, perhaps, which says, I can't sit here and be a big softy. That's a very, that's a very poor uh, demonstration for my children. Yeah. She'll have to get tough and get over it. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. Okay. That's a good guess. Well, Put your own guess in there. Um, I would guess that that's pretty accurate. I would say that that's pretty accurate. She's just, you're just, I'll be fine. And you're just going to have to get over it. Absolutely. I'm fine. I'm going to be, I'll be fine. There's nothing to worry about. Yeah. I'm I have the, control. I, I have complete control. I have control. I'm the breadwinner here. Wake Absolutely. up, wake up everybody. I want to Absolutely. go hunting. I can't sit here exactly. and play around with, you know, the fantasies of some little eight-year-old. Uh, right. You know, that would be a bad demonstration of the pillar of strength. I need to be as a father. I, I, right. All, all guesses. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Again, better behavior is possible. <laughs> okay. But, and while we're, again, not excusing it, okay. we're trying to understand it. Maybe we don't like it. Maybe we're angry about it still, but we, we got to yeah. put a little bit of that on the table as much as we can. Yes. On top okay. of the table. Yeah. All right. With that in mind. Mm -hmm. Let us bring in unseen therapists. Okay. okay. And let me ask you first: Have you have you brought in unseen therapy before on, at some level on something? Yes. Uh, with what kind of result? Um, in all honesty, it was a while ago, and I would and a while ago, I would say probably three years ago when I first read it, oh, this okay. in about it, and um, obviously. I didn't do a very good job because I'm still creating <laughs> the same issues. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Let me point out, it isn't that unseen therapist didn't work. It is likely 
that you didn't do it efficiently enough. Okay. You probably aimed at symptoms rather than cause. And absolutely. Things like that. I, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, all right. We're going to teach you how to aim at cause, and that's what we're going to do here. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to narrate the whole thing. All right. Okay. Uh, it's going to be easy for you. You just follow along. All right. However, feel free at any time as this unfolds to, to interrupt it. To say, oh, I just had this thought. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, or that isn't quite correct that you're, what you're saying there. Or whatever you want. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do that. It's okay. just there's a wide open door for you to do that. And it would be useful if something comes up. Okay. All right. So with that in mind, are you, are you ready? Yes. All right. All right. Well, close the eyes. Close the eyes. Take a, a nice, deep, relaxing breath. And just as a way of inviting unseen therapists, just recall a simple, loving moment in your own life. And just nod your head whenever you're, whenever you're there. All right, good. Let me di- keep your eyes closed. But let me just digress for a moment. Newcomers to this process often misunderstand what I mean, what this recalling a loving moment really means. Some newcomers, maybe not you, but I'm going to talk about it anyway, think somehow if this is going to work, I'm going to be calling on the spiritual dimension, the unseen therapist. I'm going to be calling on God. So I better do this right. I mean, I better get warm feelings and a Hollywood moment and angels and harps and bells and whistles. And otherwise I'm failing and I'm going to feel rejected. Sorry, but that's how you might do it. Okay. And I'm not good enough for all of this. I didn't do that. You didn't do. Oh, good. More kisses. Okay. All right. Now. The only purpose here, see, you don't need to do any of that for this. The only purpose here is unseen therapist knows that you're not, and I know that you're not, and I'm not at the ultimate pure love level of the unseen therapist. We're asking for help. So all we're really doing is by recalling a loving moment is aligning as best we can with your pure love. We're basically saying, Ah, we know you're guiding us all the time anyway. We're just not listening. But today, today we're going to hand something to you. (laughs) Going to line up as best we can and see what happens. That's all that is. Okay, That was a long explanation for a very simple, simple thing. So now with that said, shift your focus back. There you are, eight years old. You've had a dream, your father going hunting, not coming back, dying, and then you learn that he's going to go hunting, and you are are afraid. You're only eight years old. You think that dream is real. It's predictive. You're even holding on to his legs as he's wanting to leave and go hunting. And he basically says, that's ridiculous, and walks out the door. And you are having a crescendo moment. You have been rejected. You don't count. You're not good enough to even be listened to. Something as important as all of that. So we're going to represent your emotional response to this, metaphorically, as an unwanted vibration around your heart. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. That doesn't mean you need to make your heart vibrate. Okay? It's an imaginary thing. It's a representation. It's a metaphor. And we're going to hand that to unseen therapists. 
Because what we'd like to do is to have our emotional response to that fade because it's certainly not necessary to carry around. Here we are decades later and it's still causing tears, near tears, physical tightness in the body, you know, the arms, your head, jaw, and so on. That's all a sign that that's not resolved at all. And it's replaying. So we want to hand that to unseen therapists. So we hand it to her. And I can hear an echo. Said, well, we're not excusing your father's behavior. He could have been gentler. But we do need to understand it. For whatever the reason, they were his reasons. You may not agree with them, and likely he's wrong anyway, but they were his reasons. But the important thing is, Sarah, you're still carrying this around. It is costing you to keep replaying this. So now in your imagination, having given this to unseen therapists, imagine her returning to this situation with a gentle, cooling, healing breeze that flows from her, comes to you, enters your body, surrounds your heart, the unwanted vibration in your heart with nothing but love and understanding And that unwanted vibration, that emotional rejection, I'm not good enough type response, can't survive in all of that. That becomes the interpretation of somebody eight years old that needs to fade off. Because even today, you wouldn't take the advice of an eight-year-old as an adult, but you're taking the advice of your eight-year-old anyway. So it surrounds your heart, the unwanted vibration in your heart. And it starts to fade. It goes, ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Now let's do that again. There we are. Feeling rejected, your father says, that's ridiculous, and walks out the door. You're not listened to. You don't count. You're not good enough to be listened to. You've been rejected. Here comes the cooling breeze. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Now, Sharon, take your time and in your own mind, repeat that scenario again, and then again, and again, as many times as you wish until you've gotten to a point where, well, I think that's as far as I can go, whatever that, wherever that is. Okay. And when you do, open your eyes and we'll talk about what happened. And let me just point out, there's no grades for this. This is an experience. There's no good, bad. There's no success, failure, that kind of thing. It's an experience. You don't get a grade, an A or a C or any of that. It's just an experience. So just do that. And whenever you're done, just open your eyes and we'll talk. Okay. All right. So let me let me ask you in that process, were you able to follow along or did you have a bunch of competing thoughts or what? No, I I I I need this. My goal was to get it taken care of. And I focused on it the entire time. 
the first time you went through it, it was already a release. I could already feel it going. And in all honesty, what I was seeing was me there. I, I didn't react to it the same. When he walked out the door, it, it was kind of like, okay. And as I kept replaying it over and over it, I, I was reacting to it differently then. I was reacting. I was seeing myself reacting and maybe not reacting differently, but this is what I'm seeing now is basically maybe how I would handle it now is it, okay. Like, fine. You're not listening to me. Okay. I'm just going to go play. That's well, okay. Now those are, those are words where it seems like what we did was successful. Okay. Seems that way. All right. Yeah. Um, but as you will learn in this course, I'm a great one for testing. I'm always want to see testing is how you be thorough. Testing is how you find out what's not done yet. Okay. Testing is how you discover whether or not you've been fooled by something very temporary. Okay. Mm -hmm. We test, we test, we test. Very important concept. That's okay. how you really get this stuff done and done well. You clean house thoroughly important okay. important okay so we're gonna do a little test so if you would close your eyes close your eyes go back to that event run the movie in your mind again and tell me on a scale of zero to ten are you still a ten or something else no i'm honestly i'm at a zero well okay now keep your eyes closed I'm not going to believe that. That doesn't mean I'm calling you a liar. Okay. I understand you. I am a tester. Mm -hmm. I am a tester. Okay. So I want to do this at another level still. All right. Okay. Now this time, run the movie again. But this will be different. Here, you'll need to exaggerate the sights, the sounds, the feelings, your father's voice, that's ridiculous. He runs out of the door. You know, you're feeling, exaggerate everything because you're looking for what's not done yet. That's very important. Exaggerate everything. And tell me if you're still a zero or some other number or whatever happens. Go ahead. Um, I can tell you that I'm coming to, it's definitely like a one or a two. All right. You're not listening to me. So really, I'm. you're still basically rejecting me. Now, this is a one or two or something higher? Yeah, it's a one or a two that I'm All still right. basically being rejected. All right. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Okay. Now, let me, here's a question I'm going to ask you. Okay. By the way, just intuitively, for whatever it's yeah. worth, I got you higher than a one or two. I got you four or five. I got you in there someplace. Okay, well, you might be getting that because I think I have a little bit of anger coming in now. Okay, now, good, good. Okay, now let's listen up. Very important. This is lesson number three and lesson number four in your advanced lessons, okay? Remember, there are 30 advanced lessons. Okay? Yeah. Has to do with aspects. Now, you see, we never addressed anger no we didn't in our issue we addressed rejection that was the central piece right all right but not it anger it didn't even occur to me to even tell you that though until I, right there i know i know so typically typically what happens is we do this unseen therapist deals with what we put on the table right we did not put anger on the table no we didn't okay that was under the table Yes, it was. Okay. <laughs> She's not going to play with it. Anymore. She's not going to interfere with it. Okay. You want to you. You be angry? That's up to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not going to interfere. But if you want to put it on the table, oh, let's do that. Okay. okay. But yeah. you got to put it on the table. See, so what happened was, here, well, let's do this. Just another test. Go back run the whole movie again, exaggerate away, but stay on the whole idea of 
I'm feeling rejected, uh, not anger, nothing else, if you can, okay, stay on that and tell me what happens. It's a zero, some other number, what? Uh, it's like a one, maybe. Okay, open your eyes. Open your eyes. Now, we're going to do another little round here. Okay. We're going to aim at the anger piece. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, close your eyes. Close your eyes. We don't need to invite unseen therapist again. She's still here. Okay. Go back to this movie, this event. And now let's focus on the anger. Now, Sharon, one thing I could do is just stay with the vibrating heart metaphor. But there's all kinds of metaphors you can use. You can make your own up. I'm just going to use a different metaphor. Okay. Just, just so you know that you can do all this. Okay. So there you are with this anger now. You are mad because you're not being listened to. I said it right? Yes. Okay. I'm also getting you're you you are mad because yet again you are not listened to. How'd I do? Very good. Okay. So that that also suggests there's more foundational stuff in the background, other specific events, you know, where anger is an issue. All right. But we're gonna stay on this for the moment. Okay. So we're going to represent metaphorically this instead of this unwanted vibration around your heart. We're going to make it a volcano. And at the bottom of the volcano is this bubbling, anger, hot lava bubble, 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 you know, the kind of thing that could erupt at any time. The kind of thing that when you're in a current relationship and something you get criticized or something reminds you of your unresolved pasts can make the volcano erupt to a degree. But there it is. Anger, blah, 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 hot steam rising off of it. Okay. And so you give that to unseen therapists. And what she does, is she asks you to visit with her and sit on a cloud overlooking your volcano. Let that cloud hover over the opening to the volcano, looking down, seeing that anger bubbling lava. And with an understanding of it, you're young. Yes, we're not excusing your father's behavior, but you have every reason to be angry. The only problem is it's costing you. And it doesn't solve anything. So you and the unseen therapist together create a understanding loving rain it's a rain of love not water that falls down into the volcano mixes with the steam mixes with the hot lava and with all that love the steam subsides the lava is hot it mixes with the loving rain and subsides. Pshhh. And you're standing you're up on the cloud looking down and you're watching the bubbling lava subside cool down and you're noticing some words are forming as the cooling is going on. It's a word, a simple word. And that word is peace. P 
peace. You don't need to carry around all this anger, says unseen therapist. What good does it do? And so peace then starts floating up out of the volcano, up to the cloud. It just lands in your lap like a, like a puppy dog. Like you maybe even want to turn it into a puppy dog or a pet cat or something that you find loving and spend a little time, a little understanding time with it. Now, let's repeat that. The bubbling lava is the anger over this issue. You're not listening to me and I'm angry. Bubbling lava, the cloud, the loving rain. The heat subsides. The word peace evolves. Comes on up. It sits in your lap lovingly in whatever form fits for you. And then repeat that a time or two or whatever fits for you. And when you're done, just open your eyes and we'll talk. Okay. Again, you're able to follow along? Yes. All right. So mm -hmm. what happened in there? Um, from the moment that from the moment that I was sitting in the cloud, <laughs> I I already felt I mean I felt peace, but I was, I could still feel it in my body that I was holding it. I wanted to let it go, but I could still feel that I was holding it, holding on to it. Right. So going over the volcano and raining love down on it. I could just feel all of this tension, just like leaving. Like it was just, it just evaporated with the, the sizzling of the heat and the intensity of this hot, hot, hot lava. I mean, the lava, it, it, and it's anger has been such a huge thing in my life that. Um, I think that's the reason that it was just burning so hard, hot and hard, really. It was really like filling up this volcano to where it was about ready to explode. And having that, just putting that love in there. I mean, it was peaceful. It was really, really peaceful. It was almost to the point of, I have to kind of chuckle about it. I have to kind of sit there and like, wow, you've been holding this for so long, for what, for what reason? There's really, it's crazy that you do that. Why well, do you do that? <laughs> well, there's lots of reasons for that. And that's a whole other philosophy and so on. But, but uh, let yeah. me, let me make a 
comment or two on that. Getting back to our tabletop and table legs metaphor. Yes. We took one specific event. All right. We found out that there was rejection in it and we did something with that. And that appears at least for now to be on that event. Yes. Not on all the other events, but on that event. Right. That appears to be improved substantially, if not gone. Yeah, exactly. Did I, did I yeah. say it right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, okay. You did. Now, then we found, ah, oh, anger shows up. Now, that is, that's really important to understand because we want to be thorough in all of this. Okay. Right. So we're going to test again. So close your eyes. Go back to that. Go back to the anger of that event. If you can, stay on that and tell me if you're... Well, you said one or two, I said four or five, but whatever it was. Okay. Mm-hmm. Tell me what number it is now. Probably a one. All right. And okay, open your eyes. Open your eyes. Chances are, chances are, if I ask you that 10 minutes from now, it'll be a zero. Because oftentimes a little more time goes by, a little mm-hmm. more resolution goes by. But I don't know that. At, at yeah. this moment. Okay. okay. Um, and for both of these things, you're going to want to tomorrow morning go run that whole movie again and see what yeah. shows up. You're okay. right. I am going to. Okay. And <laughs> if intensity shows up, please understand yeah. it's not that this didn't work, mm-hmm. it's that there's more to do. And when you really start understanding this, you'll go, hooray, rather than, oh gosh, you'll go, yeah. hooray, there's more house cleaning to do right. is showing up now. So instead of just not being resolved, I can now go after it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Now, on the other hand, it may be just resolved and you can't get worked up about it, that specific event at all. Right. Now you've got another one to do and another one and another one. And if you do five, 10, 15, 20, really well, it will generalize over. Right. Okay. All the re- freedom shows up. Right. As a result of that. Okay. I don't think of what else I wanted to say about that. Oh, oh, I know what it was. Close your eyes. Run that movie again in exaggerated terms, but this time notice as you're doing it. Are you, are you getting any kind of physical sensations like in your arm, your head, your jaw, the kind of thing you were getting? Is any of that there? No. Okay. I don't feel anything like that at all. All right. All right. Well, all that's all that is a good omen. Again, you want to test tomorrow. Okay. All right. yeah. And as you as you learn more and more about this course and testing and being thorough and all of that, um, you get more and more of this done. Clean house more and more and more. Seemingly, as you get rejection which happens in your world anyway <laughs> i i guarantee it's coming <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, and your current relationship would maybe a good sounding board for that okay <laughs> yeah just keep noticing your response to it because chances are whatever response you're getting is a replay of something not resolved okay and if you're getting softer on it there is another good measure that you're getting freedom okay. on it. Right. right. It makes sense. And that's amazing because that's not the first time I've worked on that. That's that one is one that has come to me quite often, even doing like with Philip and Jane, that that's one that is one that I always go back to because yeah. it was big for me. It was huge. Yeah. Well, chances are you weren't thorough enough. Right. And, you, and you didn't go to cause. Yeah, and, and I, so and I so. didn't. You're right. I did not. Okay. Okay. Anything else you want to go over before we call no. it a day? No, I'm good. I'm good. I think that was, I think it was good. It feels good. I mean, it feels good. It feels like I have a release in my, yeah. like in my body. I just. Well, I would say it a little differently. You have a good start 
there's more to do, dear. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, there's a whole bunch more to do. <laughs> but the good news is it's all very doable. You can do it. Right. And there's a lot of freedom at the end of it. A lot yeah. of it. So. Right. Right.